Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta, and today we will understand how to work on higher order models in SPSS MS. Higher order models in structural equation modeling should be used when the theoretical framework or research question involves multiple levels of line and constructs. Here are some circumstances where higher order models are particularly relevant and beneficial. The first one is the nested constructs. When your theoretical model suggests that some Leiden variables are conceptually related and can be grouped under the higher order factors. For example, if you are studying intelligence, you might have a lower order factors like verbal ability, numerical ability and spatial ability, which could be nested under the higher order factor of general intelligence G factor. So here your G factor is a higher order construct, which is measured with the help of the lower order construct, which is verbal ability numerical ability and the special ability. Multidimensional constructs. When a Latin construct is com complex and can be better represented by the multiple related dimensions, these dimensions can be represented as a lower order factors while the overall construct is captured by the higher order factor. For instance, in the context of the personality, the big five personality traits, example, extroversion, creativity, leadership, could be the lower order factors under a higher order factor of personality. Third, conceptual clarity. When using a higher order model, it enhances the conceptual clarity of your research. Sometimes organizing constructs hierarchically can help researchers better understand and communicate the relationship among the different constructs. Theoretical grounding. When there is a strong theoretical justification for the existence of the higher order constructs in your research domain, if previous research or well-established theories suggest a hierarchical structure, it may be appropriate to employ a higher-order model. Fifth, reducing the model complexity. In some cases, using a higher-order model can help simplify the SEM, especially when you have a large number of observed variables and constructs. It can provide a more parsimonious representation of complex relationships. There are some caveats for using the higher order models. The first one is sample size. Higher order models generally require a larger sample size compared to the simple structural equation model. Adequate sample size is crucial to ensure model identification and reliable parameter estimates. Second, model identification. Higher order models can be more challenging to identify and there may be multiple equivalent, multiple, uh, equivalent model solutions. Careful consideration of model identification is necessary to ensure the uniqueness of the parameter estimates. Third, model interpretation. Interpreting the higher order models can be more complex than lower order models. The researchers should be cautious and ensure the interpretability and theoretical coherence of the results. So it is necessary that whatever result you get from MS, it should have a theoretical coherence. Fourth, empirical justification. Higher order models should not be used arbitrarily. There should be an empirical evidence or strong theoretical reasoning supporting the hierarchical structure of latent variables. Now the thing which you have to remember is, higher order model is a compulsion of a researcher rather than the researcher's choice. We have already discussed that what happens when the statements are correlated. Let's see, loyalty is measured with the help of four statements, S1 to S4. Satisfaction is measured with the help of four statements, T1 to T4. We require a high correlation among S1 and S4, but we require a low correlation among the statements of different construct. This particular thing we have already discussed in the Haywood cases. Kindly refer my video on Haywood cases. So if the statement shows a high correlation, it indicates a multicollinearity and this is the problem which is known as the Haywood cases. But in case of, uh, uh, in case of constructs when they are highly correlated, let's see. Loyalty is highly correlated with the satisfaction. So in this case, we will have to go for the higher order models. So when constructs show high correlation among them, the remedial measure is a higher order models. The rationale behind using higher order models in the presence of high correlation among construct is to capture the systematic variance that can be explained, explained by the higher level construct. 
By doing so, it allows for a more parsimonious and interpretable representation of the relationship among the latent variables. Repercussions of correlation among constructs. When the construct in a study are highly correlated, it can lead to a problem called the multicollinearity. This, this makes it hard to figure out the separate effects of each construct. Also, if the survey question meant to measure one construct so significant loadings on another construct in confirmatory effect analysis, it suggests a possible issue with the discriminant validity. This means that the question may not be accurately capturing the unique aspects of each construct. It's quite simple. The constructs are highly correlated, which leads to multicollinearity. Multicollinearity leads to the problem of discriminant validity for the model. So this is a zero order confirmatory factor analysis where we don't have any higher order model. Straightforward, we will be having a second order confirmatory factor analysis. We have nothing like first order. We'll start from second order. So the lower order here is F1, F2, and the higher order is F3. Now the thing which you have to note is whenever you introduce a higher order, the higher order is to be connected with the lower order with the straight arrows not the not the you should not co-vary them so single sided arrows are to be used second thing which you should understand is now this uh, lower order has been has converted into the endogenous and therefore you have to place the error term on it this is the second thing and the third thing is you have to place one on all the parts you have to pay, uh, place the regression weight one on all the paths. This is third order. Now, F3 is now the endogenous variable because F5 is a higher order and we are introducing a single sided arrow here and therefore we'll have to place the error term here also. Now, let's see how we can do this in SPSS MS. Agent is a construct which is measured with the help of Four statements. Loyalty is measured with the help of seven statements. Value is measured with the help of three statements. Company is measured with the help of four statements. Let's run the analysis. So first of all, we will go in the analysis property, click on output, make sure that these three ticks, ticks are on. One, two, and three. Run it. Now press the up arrow. Activate the standardized estimates. The reason for activating standardized estimate is that it gives me the correlation among the construct. When unstandardized estimates are on, this gives me the covariance among the construct. Our decision is based on correlation, not on the base of covariance. So activate the standardized estimates. Now you can see here, uh, agent and loyalty, 0.71 a high correlation among this construct so so uh, you can say that there will be an issue of discriminant validity same way loyalty and company high correlation all of them are showing high co correlation among them so you will have to disconnect all of them and we will introduce the higher order construct so first of all press the down arrow so it can come in the edit mode we'll start removing it one two three four and five i'll keep this code arrow to explain you something afterwards i will remove it now i'm introducing the higher order i'll start connecting the higher order with the lower order. One, two. Now let's come on the construct value and the company. I cannot use higher order when any of the construct is connected with the covariance. This was a thing which I wanted to explain. I repeat again. I cannot introduce the higher order when any of the constructs are connected with the covariance. So it's necessary that I'll remove this also now and introduce the single sided arrow. So this is the first thing which we have done. 
Now, as this constructs have converted into the endogenous, we will have to place the error term on it. One, two, three, four, done. Now, the next thing which I have to do is I have to place a regression weight one on all the arrows. So click on it. Go in the parameters, place the regression weight one. Now click here. One, here also. One, and here also. Now, we will have to name this error terms, but before naming this error term, it is necessary that you give the name to this higher order. So, let's give the name HOC, higher order construct. Go in plugins, name unobserved variable. So, the error terms, is, uh, the name of the error terms have been introduced. Now, run the analysis. Go in the view text, go in the, so model is running successfully. You can see our minimum was achieved. Now go in the model fit. So the model fit is above 5. So it is a little bit on the higher, higher side till 5, we tolerate it. Let's talk about NFI, RFI, IFI, TLI, CFI, they all are about 0.9, quite good. Let's talk about RMSCA. It is uh, more than 0.1, so the model fit is not proper. It's a little bit on the higher side. Now we will go in the estimates. So you can see here, uh, we will not get es estimates of HOC, no need to worry. We will see the standardized regression weights. So HOC, uh, its standardized regression weight is 0 0.807, loyalty 0 0.870, 0 0.858, 0 0.884. The same thing we can see on the canvas also. Activate the standardized uh, estimates, press the up arrow, and you will get the weights also. You can make the model clear by picking up the magic, magic wand. Now let's say we want to convert this into the structural model. So HOC is now not uh, composed of company. We will not include comp uh, company in it. HOC is now composed of agent, loyalty, and value. So these are the only three lower, lower order constructs. And HOC, the higher order construct, is affecting the company. So let's activate the preso symmetries and the truck from here and I'll take this thing here. So I'm converting this company as my dependent variable. I'll pick up the magic wand from here. And the first thing which I should do is I'll remove one from here. I'll remove one. So HOC, is it affecting the company's prestige or not? That thing I want to know. So as soon as I remove one, uh, we convert this thing into the structural model. Let's run the analysis. Now go in view text, go in the estimates. And now you can see we have got the values also. So HOC, is it affecting the company or not? The higher order construct, is it affecting the company's prestige or not? So here we are having three stars, which means that it is quite significant. So this is a way you get work on higher order models in SPSS MS. For more videos on SPSS, I must kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please refer my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos on SPSS MS.